All right. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to the College of Complexes. Our main speaker, Lord Shan Field, is on his way. Charlie Paynock, in the meantime, is going to be giving a little bit of his prediction speech. How do those in front of him? So it can't be yeah. the, uh, again, I'd like, to bring, I'd like to bring the college to order, please. When I get off the bus, can I ask you a favor? Can you grab that? I would like to bring the college to order, please. Five blocks. I would like to bring the college to order, please. We'd like to bring the college to order. All right. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'll be serving as probably part moderator, part stuff. And uh, the college consists of three parts. The first will be a brief announcements period. The second, our speaker will speak. And then the third part is our infamous rebuttal period. After, it's going to be a little bit different tonight. Our speaker, Mo Shanfield, is on its way. So Charlie's going to be giving a little bit of his prediction speech. Beforehand. Now Mo is on his way, our featured speaker, but he was having some health issues, so uh, as an alternative, being responsible program coordinator, I did some research in advance um, to ascertain what are the predictions for the coming year specifically as it regards to politics in the United States. And I researched what's in available in the publications uh, and among the political pundits that are out there. What are they predicting? And so I put this together for you, the highlights of them, and I even have them. Now, Tim was derelict and didn't bring a PowerPoint, but it's basically writing, so there's not much to see. But uh, I have broken it down by months, beginning with January, February, and so forth. Now, perhaps not all of these months will fall precisely within those time frames, but it is predicted uh, that these events are likely to happen. These are what is being discussed as what is likely to take place in 2018 in the United States and the things I cover and there may be one or two duplications but uh, I I collect it's let's call this a, a collection a collection of them now beginning in January Trump is uh, of course the president gives a State of the Union speech but of course it's predicted that Trump is going to declare his presidency the most successful year of any president <laughs> And he will appeal to Congress to once again, for some reason, they're still repealing Obamacare. He's still trying, spending several years at rebuilding the nation's infrastructure. If that's anyone's guess as to what that is, he's going to fund the wall and he wants us to stop sanctioning our friends in Russia. All right. Uh, his job approval rating, rating is predicted to continue to drop, and there will be another White House uh, shakeup. Al Franken is going to return to the United States Senate uh, after having talked it over with his constituents in Minnesota. The Republicans are going to claim that he never intended to leave, and that it was just a ruse or a cover to condemn Roy Moore. That great candidate in Alabama. So the Democrats just pulled this thing to be, so see what we did to our own, and you should do it to, to Roy. And they didn't, they never intended to do it at all. It was just a typical Democratic trick. Anyhow, the other thing is, and now this pertains to any, any time during the coming year, the Mueller, the investigator, has the ability to completely upend the news cycle and potentially the entire administration without any warning. So at any given time, the guy who's calling the shots is, is Mr. Robert Mueller. Okay, getting on to February. Uh, regarding the U.S. and the global space, uh, 
the on, on regarding the global stage, the U.S. will be retreating, um, and the leadership in world events are going to be taken over by China, Russia, uh, the European Union, and others. So don't look to the United States to take a leadership position uh, in um, uh, beginning in February. Also in February, it's predicted that Robert Mueller will announce the per perjury indictment of Jared Kirshner concerning multiple incorrect statements in federal filings, falsification of a government document in, as in terms of charges, and it may not sound like much to you guys, but to me that was the number one charge that could be leveled against a federal employee, the falsification of a government document. There's no defense for it. Um, and he also was uh, not telling the truth during various investigative hearings, so they're predicting in February Kirshner's going to catch it. Also in February it's predicted that Jeff Sessions, our Attorney General, will appoint a special counsel to investigate the issue of Bill Clinton and Hillary and them selling uranium to the Russian government. Anyhow, also in February, the Winter Olympics will be canceled as the U.S. team withdraws uh, concerning the imminent attack of North Korea. So they're serious about that. You might want to watch that. That's uh, the, um, the another thing beginning in February, due to Trump's uh, position regarding Israel, uh, it's probably likely that Iran, ISIS, and Al Qaeda will be making more headlines that we really don't want to see. Anyhow, we can thank Mr. Trump for waking those guys up. Now we're getting into March. Not all of these are that long. They get shorter the things that came across in March. Um, we're likely to see that if Trump, Trump is going to say that if he were Russian, he would vote for Vladimir Putin for president. <laughs> now I should remind you on Christmas Day, uh, Vladimir Putin now had one opponent, Alexei Navalny, whom they declared he, he was he was barred from running. Now I got to put it to Vladimir. That's the one thing. If you really want to take care of things, see to it that you have no opposition. If you want to. Uh, but President Trump is likely to make a statement. They're predicting that Vladimir Putin will win re-election by 93% of the vote. And Trump will say, see, it was a landslide just like mine. <laughs> also, uh, seriously, in Congress, the House Freedom Congress, with, now they're arguing this now, is will refuse to reinstitution of DACA, the uh, children of immigrants. And in return, the government, the Democrats, are not going to support government funding bill. So there's going to be a government shutdown. Uh, of, and they're thinking it will last maybe a full month, possibly 22 days. But that's a truce been called. There was some right, bitterness about that. Gutierrez here was complaining his Democrats had sold them out, but it's only put on hold for a while. Um, the the um, also in March, the federal judge will throw out the. the now remember, we just heard what happened in February. It's predicted in March that a federal judge will throw off the special investigator to probe the Clintons and the uranium deal. So it won't even last a month. So. Uh, also, at the term now overseas, uh, Mr. Trump doesn't like these people, but German voters will return um, uh, Merkel to office along with France under Macron, and these will be seen as more and more as the leaders of the world and the European community. That's up to March. In April now, we're rolling along. Um, 
with, it's also predicted that with everyone else indicted, seemingly in the White House, uh, for making false statements to either a congressional committee or the FBI, Donald Trump Jr. will become the chief of staff because there won't be anyone left who wants the job. But uh, anyhow, post Paul Ryan will definitely say he will not run for re-election. Uh, way, but he's not the only one, because a wave of retirements will sweep through the Republican Party uh, as the inevitability of the Democratic midterm wave sinks in. And Democrats, I didn't, I thought they needed more, but apparently they only need 24 seats to take control of the House in 218. That's nothing. I've seen the number, I think it, the number of Democratic candidates running for Congress is incredible. There's like 400 candidates. Um, anyhow, the 22-day shutdown I'm talking about, I talk, just talked about, will uh, will be settled. So they're going to trade off DECA and building the wall. That's what they're predicting. I also predicted in April uh, a North Korea North, North Korean missile will land near Hawaii. Uh, and Trump will warn of serious consequences if they don't stop doing this. Um, by the way, Buckingham overseas as well. Buckingham Palace will invite former President and Mrs. Obama to Prince Henry's wedding and not Trump. Ah. <laughs> it will cancel the trip to London. All right, getting on into late spring and in May, um, Nancy Pelosi is likely to announce her retirement. I've heard her speak. She's an incredibly well-versed and intelligent legislator. Legislator. Much I can see why she has that position. Uh, <laughs> they're still going to be at it again. But the Senate will again will reject repealing Obamacare for what is this, the 75th time or something like that. The Russian troops are likely to invade the Ukraine and blame the Ukraine for provocation, always. They blame there, it's only a defensive action. Uh, get this, and in May it's likely that the courts will move along and Paul Manafort will be convicted of seven counts and sentenced, they're saying, to as much as 50 years in jail. What do you do? <laughs> what do, you do? Oh, money laundering and lying and fraud. You know, what did Trump do? Same thing. <laughs> uh, now North Korea is still going to be at it, but this time they're going to shoot a missile at Samoa. And Trump will issue again a strong warning against them. But uh, there's theory that Rocket Man, actually he, he's, his status isn't that great in Korea. He has Russian bodyguards, by the way. And he doesn't like, he's like Trump, he doesn't like it when other countries ignore him. Uh, so instead of tweeting for attention like Trump, he launches a missile or shoots out the nuclear bomb. All right, also in May, uh, this one is rather intriguing. They're predicting that NAFTA, the North American Trade Act, will be axed, will be canceled, with Trump blaming Canada for being intransigent to unreasonable American requests by Trump for balanced trade fairness. Canada just wouldn't go along. And he's going to blame them anyhow. They're going to cancel the North American trade agreement. Um, but Canada, frustrated and openly angry with Trump's justification, uh, the Trudeau government, in retaliation, the Canadians, are likely to sign a Trans-Pacific Partnership deal and launch free trade talks with China. One of the amazing things is the President of the United States went over to Asia, spent 12 days over there, for no purpose that I can personally ascertain. He came back with nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
decided to do Why did he go? Boeing. China bought a bunch of Boeing. What, they have egg too young? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Anyhow, they're gonna they they're not they're just gonna deal with China separately. Um, the relationship between Beijing and Washington is going to get worse, uh, caused by economic competition, some issues on the South China Seas, regional security, and global politics. So there's some issues pending there in Asia. Um, also, the U.S. and China will have some differences of opinion. And if you know about this, about the Belt and Road, Road Initiatives, the Silk Road, uh, that they want to establish ties with Europe trading. There's going to be some issues on that. All right, in June, we're in the middle of the year already. So hopefully I'm not boring you by talking too much of talking yet. But anyhow, in June, um, it's also predicted he hasn't done so already, Mueller will bring perjury charges against Donald Trump. And as a result of Trump Jr. And as a result of that, this one's great. <laughs> Kellyanne Conway will become the fifth chief of staff of the White House in a year and a half. <laughs> uh, Secretary of Rex Tillerson will say goodbye, resign, and they'll turn over that guy, uh, Bob Corker, who's on either side of the fence. Uh, uh, one thing that I'm predicting is that there will be a report by one of the major media outlets on the dangers of ridding the country of all of these regulations that he's been doing. I personally predict that there's going to be some, the harmful effects are going to come out about the wholesale elimination of regulations. I've posted any number of things on my FedBlood site regarding this, but the consequences are going to start showing up that some of these, there is a very valid reason for government regulation. And without it, some very, very unfortunate things can happen to people. And that's evidence of that will be uh, coming out. Um, let's see what else. A little bit on overseas. Uh, Frank, you're from South America. But Mick, because of low commodity prices, and low public tolerance with corruption and democracy. But uh, in, in Latin America, in the upcoming election cycle, there's likely to be profound changes in Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Paraguay, Mexico, and Venezuela. So we might get, we do have, my friend Stanley is pretty well versed on this. We may get him in here to explain what's going on there. All right, moving on to July. We're getting there. Um, the House, we're still working for it. Uh, the House will include wall funds in the appropriation. Uh, this one is great. This could happen at any time. But Trump allegedly is going to accuse the Supreme Court justices, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Stephen Breyer, Breyer of Breyer of plotting to keep him from naming new justices by staying alive. <laughs> Russian, along with this, Russian President Putin will hail, quote, my friend Donald and a Trump state visit to Moscow. Notice he didn't make it to England. But he is going to make it to Moscow. Uh, as a result of with Trump's job approval rating, we'll see to 30%. Uh, also in July, the true depth of the Russian interference in the election will become clear. Uh, in, in, regarding the Trump, Brexit, and even past every other European elections, we'll uncover all manner of issues raised by the purchasing ads on social media by non-state and non-political actors. So they're looking in July, this will all be coming out. Uh, those of you say there was no, no collusion or nothing happened. Uh, this will have repercussions for the Trump presidency. It's also going to have a huge impact on tech companies like Google and Facebook. They'll be on the firing line and probably be split up as a result of it. In August, 
in August. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Now remember the elections are coming up, but Trump is reported to say that it doesn't look like many Republicans are going to want him to be him campaigning for them. So he'll claim this is just fake news. They really want him to campaign for them. Um, also in August, uh, Independent Councilor Mueller will accuse the Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein of colluding with the Russians and Trump campaigns to drain, drain off Democratic votes. Hear that, Greenies? Yeah, old Stein. He was there in Moscow with the Ruskies. She's trying to talk her way out of that one. Anyhow, moving on to September, um, the uh, Trump, uh, rather than campaigning, since he has no invites to campaign, but he'll claim that, quote, important government business will limit his campaigning opportunities. He's busy. He's got things to do in Washington. Uh, polls, again, they're still going on. We'll show that Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders easily lead by 10 to 12 percent over uh, Trump uh, in a campaign. Um, and the Senate, it's suggested, will in fact reject wall funding. Remember we talked earlier it was in the House and the Senate. The Senate will reject it and uh, hopelessly deadlocked. They're still going to be deadlocked on this. They're going to kick it off to January. So. It'll be next January before there's anything about the wall. In October, we're getting there, almost done, late boys and girls. Um, the Democrats uh, will use the campaign that they'll say one of their priorities will, in fact, be the spending of the infrastructure. Now, I don't know if all of you are familiar with the thing on the infrastructure, being in with the transit and transportation thing. During the campaign, Trump had no, no, nothing, nothing written. All he did was talk to a reporter. And his plan for the infrastructure, he said, I'm going to spend a billion dollars. And that was it. And then uh, when, when the election came, they asked him about his infrastructure plan. And he said, well, I talked to the Republicans, and they don't like big government spending. So there's not going to be an infrastructure plan. Well, then, there, then there, that caused a lot of consternation because uh, there's transportation like transit, you know, public transit depends on this, and highway funding in all the states. So finally they came back. I'll tell you the thing about Trump's plan is it, if it exists at all, it's one of these where they have a, a public-private partnership and they get public money invested in this. The, the, the trick of the, the deal with it is, though, if a private sector investor puts in one dollar, or no, he gets one dollar value of investment for 18 cents uh, investment. So it's a huge payback. It's a gift to the Republican donors. So anything when they talk about public-private partnership or private financing, it's a gift to the donors as much as 80% uh, uh, return on the dollar. Uh, let's see. Trump has likely predict a surge of government revenue from his tax cut. Uh, however, it's only one-third of the people will believe him. <laughs> in November, now we're almost done, uh, okay, the Democratic Tusami will recapture the House, Senate, and various governorships such as Florida, Michigan, Illinois, and Ohio. Uh, Trump will blame no one else other than Ryan and Mitch McConnell. Uh, the GOP will kick out these guys. The Freedom Caucus, I don't know if you know about that, that's 50 unnamed kind of strange Republicans. But they do have a chair. Mark Meadows will be chosen as the new leader. 
and uh, if to replace McConnell, McConnell will be placed by Texas Senator John Cornyn. Uh, the first move of the Democrats, the very first move of the Democrats to control Congress will be what? Uh, right. Their first move will be to try to impeach President Trump despite all the hurdles and risk involved. Irrespective of whether they succeed or not, it is not it is likely to slow down Trump's agenda as he will have to dedicate more time to defending himself. Yeah. Too bad, Donnie. That's not fair. That's just not right. Uh, anyhow, in December, it's taken a while, but my Mueller's final report will accuse Donald Trump of two counts of obstruction of justice and clear evidence of Russian influence uh, and collusion with the Trump campaign. Uh, also, in regarding the end of Trump, we will start to see at least one more. There's one more major scandal that will finally bring Trump down. Either new sexual harassment, ties to Russia, tax issues. Perhaps all three of them or something new. But there's another scandal out there. The question is really, how has it not already happened? Yeah. Uh, the lame duck. I like this. Now, we're, of course, if you're getting a new Congress, you have a lame duck Congress. But the lame duck Congress <laughs> control House Judiciary Committee. Is this that guy, that Carolina guy that runs that? I forget. But anyhow, the House Judiciary Committee will improve. This is actually considered well, uh, threatening to impe an impeachment resolution against Hillary Clinton. <laughs> By the way, and this is predicted. There will be 27 Democrats who announced intention to seek the candidacy of the presidency of the United States. Anyhow, thank you very much. I see our speaker has arrived. Welcome, Mo. All right, any questions before I turn it over to our... Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to know what you think about what the Cubs are going to be doing next year. As a matter of fact, there was something in here. Somebody predicted... Um, the New York Yankees will win the World Series over the Washington Nationals. And Trump will say that's not surprising. All Washington teams are losers. Anything in Washington is a loser. Russ, you had a question. Pay attention, young man. He stole my question. He stole your question. That's it? That's the, that's the questions I get from baseball stuff. I gave you the future of the world. I gave you an outline of the future of the world. <laughs> that's the best what, of the world. That's not <laughs> what's important to Chicago yes, baseball fans, Charlie. Baseball. I haven't been to a baseball game in years, nor do I intend to ever go to one. Okay. It's like Stanley watching Cup. grass grow. I'd rather watch grass grow. Okay, who's going to win the Instead Stanley of watching Cup. baseball, I go in my backyard and I watch the grass grow. You think the Bears are going to improve much, yeah, Charlie, or not? Yeah. Anyhow, all right, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. Let's introduce Mo yeah, Shanfield, right. now our main speaker. All right, Mo, if you're ready. What's the time you ready? All right. That was a pretty good speech, I thought. Yeah. Okay, Mo, when you're ready to go, go ahead and get up there. It's, it's all verified. I didn't make up hard. Of course, you yeah. think it's up the China deal. No. <laughs> I no. just looked it up. It was on right CBS News. What? 260 wide-body planes and 40 narrow-body planes. He signed a deal with Boeing. All right, Mo, when you're ready, let's go. They create like 70,000 jobs. Well, I don't know. I don't know about the answer. We're all down in the middle of the speech. You didn't refuse. Okay. You didn't achieve it. Oh, yeah. Okay, who's going to win the family cup side? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Shockley. Good evening. Good evening. Um, a friend of mine, a close associate of mine in the Green Party, I was the Green Party candidate for Congress in uh, 2008 in the 9th District against Jan Schakowsky. He was sort of my uh, campaign manager. 
he has got a worse cold than I do. <laughs> he couldn't come tonight. But he would tell you, here's, if he were here to introduce me, here is exactly what he would say, because he said it many times. He said, when I, O'Shanfield, ran for Congress in uh, 2008, I was on television for two minutes. I don't know if Channel, 7, uh, Channel 11 still has that, or candidates on the ballot. Oh, yeah. And in those two minutes, I laid out a plan uh, for industrial mobilization uh, to create, uh, but just like 1942, uh, to devote 40% of the economy to creating uh, solar, wind, and other forms of sustainable energy systems and electric cars and so forth and so on. And uh, Walter, who's really very knowledgeable and much more knowledgeable than I am in, in uh, technology, said that 100 years from now, the historians, that if there's going to be any historians left, the historians will say, I was the only one with the solution. That's what he said. Uh, as far as I can see, I haven't seen it a solution comparable to mine. Um, I, if with everyone's permission, or at least acceptance, I'd like to um, open uh, my speech in a way that I don't think anyone has ever done at the College of Conference. I want to open it with a prayer to <coughs> oh, God please. Almighty. Yes. Um, <laughs> dear God, Forgive my having to consult my notes. But every part of this prayer is heartfelt. Uh, just as my heart requires a pacemaker and an aortic uh, valve replacement, I require my notes. And I know your understanding. Um, and you know, dear God, of my devotion to truth justice, etc. Um, in 1941, as you well know, as an eight-year-old child, in the spring of 1941, about a half a year before Pearl Harbor was attacked, I did what many little boys like to do, inspired by the Nazi blistry in France. I like to, uh, I drew up pictures of battles with tanks shooting and blah, blah. And I drew up them, probably a half a dozen of them, six by eight each. And over the top of each one, I wrote, Keep America out of war. Thou rememberest that, my lord, I am sure. <clears throat> and I naturally uh, took my leaflets out to, a, to the corner of uh, Farwell in Greenview and handed them out to six people. <laughs> I wasn't, I, I had no idea what a peace movement was. I didn't know what peace was. Um, in 1953, confronted by the loyalty of, uh, in the Army, just before I started basic, we were filling out papers like how, how much money to send home to get the loyalty oath, which of course was not a loyalty oath. It was a, uh, it was a test oath. And uh, that was given to the Puritans, too. And so you know that very well, God. Uh, I stood up to the army. I refused to sign it. So you, and when I was protesting the Vietnam War, and this is really very crucial, I, I, Roosevelt was still alive when I was born. And, and he died when I was about 12 or 13. And I saw Hubert Humphrey and Harry Truman as continuers of the New Deal. And I thought, we're on that path. We're on the path to making America better by the standards of FDR, which are really the standards of the people. So when the Vietnam War came along, I thought, well, this is a weird glitch. Let's get rid of the Vietnam War and get back on that path. I had no conception of what some of the radicals were saying at the time, that um, the, Viet the Vietnam War was an example of the pursuit of American corporate capitalist imperialism. 
and it was predictable. And even when it, even when we end that war, we'll get into more wars. I didn't think of that. I was a standard, although anti-Cold War, liberal. <clears throat> and I didn't realize the depth, uh, depth to which this society has fallen. Um, and it took me a, this was the hardest speech I ever had to write, the hardest prayer I ever had to give, dear God, because I'm thinking at a different level entirely. Now, Charlie gave you a very good, uh, Charlie gave the audience, dear Lord, gave them a very good crazy of what is likely to happen. Um, and I'll just note that I, my addition from my ultra-radical viewpoint to Charlie's predictions, most of which are pretty solid, is that there's one thing he left out, and this is what I predict. As the impeachment comes closer, war will come closer. A, a threat, like Trump could say, they discovered uh, a nuclear bomb planted by the, um, the Muslim terrorists underneath the Capitol building, sends the army in to evacuate the, the Congress, and they, uh, maybe they can find a place to meet again, maybe not. Maybe the army will go a little bit out of its way in dispersing them. Or he could start a war overseas and say, this is a national emergency, we have to close down the Congress. Uh, I can't predict where that legal, where the legal fight would go, but if I know my Trump, that's what he's going to do. Yeah, so one so job. Now, dear God, pardon me, I diverted from you. I want to remind you and everyone else here that Jesus said, "Blessed are the peacemakers. The, the meek shall inherit the earth." Uh, and very crucially, he said, "As ye do it unto me." As you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto me. Um, and he said, the truth shall set you free. So my plea tonight is for you, dear God, to give protection to the truth seekers uh, assembled here in the College of Complexes and all others devoted to the truth as devoted as they are to you. And I ask you, dear Lord, to guide our vision and insight to see through the mother of all lies. It is inherent in capitalist culture, not in capitalist enterprise. Uh, Max Weber makes this point, that there was business enterprise and uh, greed and accumulation of wealth in various enterprises, especially um, uh, <clears throat> voyages to the east to get spices and sell them at a high price back in Europe. This was not capitalism. This was not, it was business enterprise, it was profit making, it was not capitalism. Max Weber, probably the greatest e uh, economic sociologist or whatever the hell you want to call him since I don't know who, he, he outdoes Adam Smith because he knows what the hell he's talking about. Um, what, what makes capitalism? What makes capitalism is exactly what Max Weber said in one sentence. In one sentence. He said, dear Lord, as you well know, he said, the, um, what's the name of his book? The, uh, Der Geist des Kapitalismus und der something or other of Protestantism, Protestantische Ethik. Geist. That's a very important word to German philosophers, thinkers, communists, and Nazis. It means, well, does anyone know what Geist means? The spirit of the huh? time. What? The spirit. Spirit. Very good. <coughs> That's even better. It's sometimes interpreted as mind. The spirit of capitalism is manifested when the capitalist business enterpriser <laughs> looks at every decision he has to make with, with a single standard. Does it maximize the, my profit margins? Uh, 
I don't know, probably Max Weber, he's smarter than well, I am, so he probably also puts in an addendum that something could maximize your profit margins reasonably. Use the mic, Mo. But if there, if something could maximize your profit margins reasonably, but if there's something else that will do a better job for you, you better go with that second thing. All right, well, that sounds no normal for business. The problem is that the Geist des Kapitalismus, the capitalist spirit, has invaded all of our minds. There are little trumps in all of you. Even in me, the great radical. No doubt. Yeah, we got to watch out. Um, every time you get aboard a bus or a, a, a bus or a, C, a, 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 a CTA a, a train, and you sit down with everyone there. You are all doing something undreamt of in any previous society, from the Neanderthals through the Babylonians and the Hebrews and the Romans and the Greeks. What are you doing when you're sitting there with these other people? that never happened before. Completely new. You think you're just doing the conformist thing and going to work to get there at 9 o'clock? You're doing something radical. I'm going to tell you what you're doing. It has never been done before in any previous society. You are gathering with a group of people. You won't even call it gathering. You're all singly going, but it looks like a gathering, sitting at one end of a car. I was sitting at one end of a car and there was four or five people all on their cell phones. But even before cell phones, people were gathering and ignoring each other. Now, I'm not telling you to uh, talk to everybody on the L or the bus. The society militates against it. But that experience is training on being self-centered, isolated, non-communicative. <laughs> and the best thing with capitalism. It trains you for capitalism, because capitalism wants you to just figure out what is my maximum um, uh, profit margin on whatever I'm doing. But that profit margin can invade your sex life. How does the profit margin invade your sex life? Just before it went out of business, and I mourn its passing, the Chicago Daily News, the finest newspaper we ever had, the daily newspaper we ever had in Chicago, uh, printed a um, report of some research at the University of uh, Southern California, I think. Um, first, they established a scoring pattern. If you're handsome or beautiful and you have a million dollars, you score pretty high. Um, if you speak a foreign language, if you have a good business, if you got the Nobel Prize. <laughs> so a lot of people sc scored high, even more people scored pretty low. So then they went, they studied marriages, and they gave each marital partner a score. And they found, probably not to their surprise, that no one married anyone who was more than 200 points away from them on a scale of 2,000. People are looking at their marriage partner on this um, uh, uh, sexual romantic family profit margin. What, what good does it do me if I am a millionaire to marry a poor woman? That won't go over with my fellow millionaires. My status is going to go down. Um, so the idea of maximizing profit margin permeates society. That's why. It's proper to call this a capitalist culture. And that belief that the profit margin can um, guide you through life is the, is the mother of all lies, if we're no other, for number one, because it denies our humanity. I, I was on the L one time, uh, not too long ago, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know what possessed me. I started to preach to the L riders, and I said, if an angel sat down next to you, would you talk to him? Kill him. Well, 
There's someone sitting next to you who's almost as good, maybe better than an angel. I'm not sure how humanity compares with angels in God's uh, esteem. So why don't you talk to your neighbor? No one did. I don't blame them. That's, that's the part of the culture they're in. I might as well blame our Romanian and Romanian for speaking Romanian. Um, so our humanity is denied. And of course, that leads to an inevitable conclusion. What is the inevitable end of this process? Destruction of civilization and possibly of the earth as a habitable uh, place. I think everybody should apologize to their pets in advance. Um, so if we see through this lie, then we come to another startling conclusion, dear God. I'm still on the prayer. It doesn't sound like it. I know. You'll forgive me, God. With the people being deprived of medical care, and I just got out of the hospital, and I benefited from having Medicare and Medicaid, what's going to happen to them, I'm not sure. Um, even the working class whites and the poor whites who voted for Trump would have been better off as Aryans in Nazi Germany. Bismarck established the first social security plan. Everyone know who Bismarck was. He was a great militaristic German leader who beat the French in 1871, and he really stuck it to them. He came into the Hall of Mirrors, which is a great French um, edifice and place of honor, and he declared the German Empire right in the heart of Paris. I mean, he didn't take over Paris. He took over Alsace-Lorraine. <coughs> He established the first social security system in Europe with medical benefits as well. Hitler did not change that. He maintained it. That's something that Hitler did that Trump is not doing. Trump is not. Uh, now, maybe if Obama had been more of a militarist and wore a helmet with a spike on, uh, on the top like Bismarck, maybe Trump would have said, well, that's okay. He was a military man and he knew what he was doing. Um, no Aryan can sink in his status below the high level that Hitler gave them. Now, if you were an Aryan who committed a murder of another Aryan, and you, know, you could be put on trial. Uh, in the South, even the, the whites who, uh, who were the dominant racial group by far. If a white committed a murder, he might well be put on trial, maybe even executed. So the fact that some Aryans were executed is not the point. The point is, once you're an Aryan, it can't be taken away from you. In the United States, human value is measured in dollars, which can be taken away from you. If you there was an essay written in the law places, South Carolina in 1803, got in a book of pamphlets from the early republic. And what that, um, what that uh, essay said, it was published in the South Carolina newspaper, it said, if you're poor, you do not count. You are not in this society. Forget about it. They saw that in 1803. And Trump is picking up that particular part of the colonial heritage and, and running with it. And dear God, as you well know, um, my words to Adam and Eve were a promise. Even if we were kicking them out of uh, Eden, what was the promise to Adam and Eve? No Christians here, no Jews, no Muhammadans, no the Bible. He said, go forth and multiply and be the uh, I forget the word he used, like the supervisor of all the all living things, all animals, etc. In other words, the earth, Adam and Eve, belongs 
to you and to your descendants. He didn't mention a word about the corporation. Now, if I if I misstated this God, strike me dead right now. I'm waiting. He's the fucking God. Forget it. Yeah. There's nothing. Mussolini said that one time. Nobody. When he was an atheist socialist. <coughs> So the difficulty arises from not merely the fact that corporations have taken over everything. I'll give, I'll give you guys a break so you can continue communicating. Let me know when you're ready. The difficulty, or difficulty, the tragedy and the danger arose. I'm sorry. Use the mic. Mike, how many minutes do I have left? It, uh, how, how, how? What? It's right now 727. Uh, you feel that? I'm sorry? Uh, yeah. It's 727 right now. Yeah, so what, well, how many minutes do I have left? Maybe, huh? Uh, Continue until you're ready. I mean, oh, all right, okay. Let me know when it gets too boring and you want me to stop. Right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for letting me know. Well, why don't you figure five minutes or so, and then we can take what? questions. Okay. Give me a five-minute warning. Yeah. Well, oh. we'll just say like five minutes or yeah, so okay. from now on. Um, the primitives, who are much smarter than we are. You know, science, psychological and sociological science, keeps discovering uh, new principles of human life and how to raise children and this and that. And the Neanderthals and the cro magnons were not smart enough to have scientists. They were just smart enough to be conducting their lives and raising their children in accordance with all the great discoveries of the modern science that no one pays any attention to anyhow. The difficulty that arose from, oh, so the, the primitives who never saw a missionary conformed to God's words to Adam and Eve. How did they do that? Well, it's very well known that among American Indian tribes and practically all other primitive groups, there is no such thing as landed private property. When the Indians were confronted by, what was it, a Dutchman? What was the name of that Dutchman in Manhattan? Bob Stuyvesant. Yeah. Stuyvesant, yeah. Or his buddy, one of the two. And he, he said he gave them 24 blankets or something to pay for it. He thought he was buying Manhattan. The Indians thought, what did the Indians think that they were doing? Anyone got a guess? They thought that uh, Stuyvesant was buying the right to hunt. Because the Indian, American Indian conception is that the land belongs to the Great Spirit. Which is more in conformity with Christianity than most Christians at that time and, and, uh, and since. So they didn't have this difficulty of someone grabbing up all the land and power, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so, bless her, the truth seekers, as well as the peacemakers. Um, thank you for listening to my rather impossible prayer. I apologize, God. I apologize to all of you. Now, I'll let my ego run rampant with the rest of my speech. Um, I recently had, I was recently at White's Memorial Hospital, and they put me into a, 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 a private room. Unfortunately, the other occupant of the room was a maniac. I don't know if he was in a coma, talking in his sleep, or talking with some kind of consciousness. And he was swearing and threatening what he had already been doing as I came in, as I came into the uh, into the room, and as they were putting me to bed, I said to the nurse, "What he needs is a tranquilizer." 
Well, they didn't give him a tranquilizer. Then after a while, I said to the nurse, does he have a history of violence? And she said she didn't know. A few minutes after that, guess what I requested? A private room. I, I said, different room. I'd be glad to be in a room with a long-legged blonde or anybody else <laughs> presenting an apparently threatening persona. Well, after a while, they found a room. Now, here's what I have to ask all of you. If you were in that situation, what would you do? If someone says, I wouldn't do anything. I know he's not going to attack me or whatever. Whatever your rationale is, I'd like to hear from someone who says, I wouldn't do anything. Anybody? Would you do anything? Shoot your mouth off. What? Shoot your mouth off. You would shoot your mouth off. Is that it? I'm being suspicious. Well, I'm... Is anyone going to respond to this personal question? What is, is, will someone tell me what's illegitimate about this question that you don't respond to it? I'm packing up. That's it. This is a completely unresponsible audience. I've asked you a very reasonable question, which you didn't answer. Okay. And, when you uh, made a mistake, it's a waste of time talking to you. When you make a mistake, you blame the audience, right? Oh, it, it's, <laughs> tell me if it's my fault. Well, it is. Why? Yeah, I asked you a question. Yeah. Why? What would you do in those circumstances? It's something that a child could understand. Yeah. You would have an answer. You're Let a single person you answer. But you're, you're, you're not talking to children. What? You're not talking to children here. You're talking to a bunch of people. Well, why, why not answer that all. question? It's a question a child would understand. Yes. Meaning, presumably, you will understand it. Yes. You, I think you are a little bit smarter than the average child. Yes. So why didn't you answer the question? Repeat the question. Repeat the question. What? I, I invite, listen, I invite anyone who wants to explain why he didn't answer okay. the question to come up here and give it. All right, all right, Mo. Let's let's let you take questions from the audience now. Uh, no, I want to hear any explanation of why you didn't answer the question. It's a very clear question. I didn't hear the question. You want to hear it again? Yes. Restate the question, Mo. Speaking in, speaking to the microphone. All right, I will speak. You cut in and out. You're not understanding me. He's doing a good job of getting me to speak in the microphone. The rest of you should help. All right, Mo. It's very simple. Okay. Did you hear the part that I was in a hospital room? Right. Hospital room. Did you hear the part that the, the guy on the other side of the curtain was uh, swearing and threatening somebody? Did you hear that? Yes. That's the essence of it. Regardless of what I did, what would you do? It's hard, it's hard to answer about that. Probably the same thing you did. Well, request tell me what to be, was that? Request what was that? to be moved. Okay. Here's a man who wants to be moved. Is there anyone here who wouldn't bother to be moved? Yeah, Is there any? There's one. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You don't have, you don't have just cause. I'm sorry, what? You don't have just cause. If some guy gets angry about some issue, uh, you're not allowed to get angry in the world. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, am there? I allowed to go to a different room? No. No. He no. says no. Okay. Absolutely Thank you. Not. Charlie, thank you for answering. If you don't like the room we give you, you can just leave. Okay. You not only answered with me. Say you, you, thank you, Charlie. You not only answered me, you argued with what, what I did. Okay. So if someone wants to argue with me, fine. But I'd like to hear what you would do, or maybe you would do exactly what Charlie says he would do, which is nothing. I would start a fight with a guy. A I'm sorry, what? I would start a fight with a guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now that the joke time is over, what would you really do? Well, that's it. Well, you would attack a man in the bed. Not attack him, but start a fight. And, uh, Be verbal. And, uh, yeah, verbal. Oh, okay. All right. That's an answer. No, no other answer. All right. Can anyone tell me why they're not answering the question? You were going to tell me why you didn't answer the question. See, I have a, I have a union job, so I would. You have what? I have a union job, so I would be in a private room, so I wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> you know the meaning of the word if, I, F. Yeah. It's the it's shortest and one of the most complex words in the English language. <laughs> All right. All right, Mo, are you ready to take questions? No, I'm not ready to take questions. I'm ready to go home. Why? Why? Because this audience is not responsive. 
If you don't like my way of putting it, you tell me why not. You didn't even tell me that. Well, Mo, I can tell you I, right now. I don't now. want to talk to an audience. That is, you know, it's a perfect example. And what I was going to prove with all this was that if most people weren't going to do anything, they don't know how to spot a danger. I'll make one concluding remark. Okay. Why should I play a lottery, even if there's only one ten to one percent chance that he would attack me? Why should I play that lottery when the only prize is injury and possibly death? There's no positive prize. Okay. I don't want to play that game. I want to get out of his purview. And that is my I will say, but I'm going All right. And, oh, so, Mo, you're not going to take questions? We would like to... The audience wouldn't re respond to my speech. It's well, very Mo, clear. You're a bunch of fucking deadheads. No wonder you're not doing much to protect Mo, against global The thing is, you're, 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 you're almost... You're almost... Uh, I don't want to waste my breath on a bunch of deadheads. I don't think we're deadheads, Mo. Oh, then why didn't, you, why didn't they answer the question? We did right. later answer, on. If, if three people... Well, explain to me why you didn't answer the question. I will continue to speak. We didn't expect it. It's un, out, out of the order, out of the norm. I want to hear it from them. Don't give me a, a theory. I want to hear from a person I don't have to who didn't answer. answer. Your question. You know, you're making me work too hard. I I'm 85-year-old to man. I'm going. I'm going. And fuck all of you. You didn't give us enough information. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mo. Shame on you. What? Why don't you come up? I'll help you moderate with questions. I think uh, some people. I want to hear if three people will volunteer to tell me why they didn't answer a simple, interesting you got hypothetical. Two. Don't you point got. fingers. Tell me why you didn't you answer. Got two behind you right now, Mo. Behind you with their hands raised. <laughs> oh, there's one. Okay. There's two. And then I'm sure... It's like the black people are superior to the white people Why don't you, And then we right. got a third one here. I don't take four. Okay. 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 All right. I'm sorry, but I kind of got lost in your speech, so I kind of didn't really catch on to the question. So how many, I, how many times did I repeat that question? Um, After the last time I repeated it, did you understand the question? Yes, I understand. Why didn't first, you answer it? The first time I didn't understand it. Why didn't you... Tell me why you didn't answer. That would be a good answer. You didn't understand. You would have said that. Because I didn't want to interrupt your speech because I saw I was asking for I'm asking for responses. Well we're getting them now. And she she gave you a good valid reason. Let's go to number two. Let's go to number two. But it's it was an answer, right? This next young lady here's got to do with that one. Okay. Why didn't you answer? I didn't answer the question because I didn't think it was a question for us to answer because you were praying and you forgot to say amen. Oh, uh, that's a good one. I forgot to say okay. amen. So the prayer was still... All right, up. now let's go to the... There's a third one right here, Mo. Yeah. You did not give us enough information. Oh, you, I failed to tell you that the, the hospital room was painted blue. Is that it? No, but... What more do you want to know? It's how the relationship developed between the two of you. There was no relationship. I told you I just was in the room and he was yelling and that's it. The relationship. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you volunteer earlier rather than make uh, 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 an old fish, an uh, 85 year old man who's taking cough medicine strain his throat before you answered? First of all, I have to think it through. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, that'll do. Well, I'll take one more and then I'll continue. Okay, this guy over here who had a response. I don't know how to exactly respond to your question, by the way, because... Uh, what, what, what did you need to know to know how to respond? Well, at first I want to notify the, uh, the uh, nurses or somebody. Well, why didn't you say that? Well, everybody else is talking. I, I didn't, you could have raised your hand. I would have called them. I did right oh, afterwards. All right. I, oh. still, I think... Uh, all right, now Mo, are you satisfied with the answers? No, and, but I'll continue. <laughs> all right, now let's get. All right, Andy, let's get. Okay, let's get you some questions, Mo. Mo, I'm not finished with the speech. Okay, Mo, let's go on with the speech. Where's my baby Mo? You put him. You put him in your bag, Mo. Yeah. All right. This is a wonderful example of our problem. <laughs> Might not be a bad, bad move, Mo. Hold on. Okay, use the mic, Mo. People are talking. I'm waiting for them to finish. Oh, my God. Who else is there? I see that humans don't decide. Can I get another room? 
<laughs> okay. I already told you that in 2008, I did something not particularly brilliant. I called on television for two minutes on Channel 11. I called for an industrial mobilization like 1942, but instead of guns, tanks, and planes, it would be solar, wind, and other sustainable energy systems. Um, does anybody, if you put the expenditure that the United States put into the, uh, incidentally I should say that Roosevelt accomplished something great not only in the New Deal, but he said after the Japanese attack, I think he was talking to, generals in the Pentagon and other aides. And he said, we have got to build the greatest war machine in history so that our soldiers will have superior firepower and that will, will cut our casualties. He wanted to cut the casualties. Okay. Uh, in pursuing this goal of his, um, some, a lot of money was spent. I helped to to raise a lot of that money, I was selling war bonds door to door. That's one of the ways in which a lot of money was raised, by selling war bonds. Of course, people didn't know what to do with their money because there were no automobiles or refrigerators being uh, produced. So in all the money being spent for World War II, our rearmament, if you put that money into 2017 terms, how much money do you think was spent? That I have no guess for, but can you tell us, please? Does anyone feel like guessing? No. Does anyone even play a no. guessing game? A hundred thousand. What? A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. You know what one uh, missile cost? No. Millions. Oh. Okay. Anybody else want to guess? Five trillion. What? Five trillion. Okay. Five trillion. You're a smart guy. You, you need to get a little bit smarter. You know why? You know why you need to get smarter? Because you're two trillion short, roughly speaking. The equivalent would be seven and a half trillion. And the day before Pearl Harbor was attacked, or two days before, the Republicans in Congress were saying, we got no money, we can't do more welfare for people with the New Deal and all that crap. Can you imagine the country? They were saying the country is broke. Is, that, is anyone familiar with a book entitled Chicago is Not Broke? No. Yeah, have, you seen, have you seen the book? I have it. You have it? Good for you. That book really tells how the money is being stolen from the people in many ways. It's a book worth buying. And, and America wasn't broke. Okay. So I recommend doing the same thing all over again except for sustainable energy systems. Guess who said, seven years later, guess what leading American said that Mo Shanfield was right? You know what, what leader said that? No. He is the top man in his field. America's smartest investor, Warren Buffett. Unfortunately, he didn't know my name. He didn't hear my broadcast, but here's what he said. He said, the threat of global warming is greater than the threat of the attack on Pearl Harbor was. Now, consider that. If you, if you, of course, what he's doing, he's giving, I wish I had thought of that line, he was giving the diagnosis. I had given the cure seven years before. He said that. Now, now the challenge from Warren Buffett, you can forget Mo Shanfield, but you got to, Warren Buffett was giving America what every investor would love to have. Good Warren Buffett investment advice. They call Warren Buffett the Sphinx because the people on Wall Street want him to talk because he's so fucking smart when he decides to invest somewhere you know damn well that is going to be a damn good investment 
he doesn't talk. <laughs> well, I got three minutes to yeah, go. I think so. We want to get some questions right. in. All right, I'll, I'll come to a crucial point I'm trying to make. Give me, give me five minutes. All right. Okay. But I promise to stop. And besides, I need a glass of water. Can anyone give me a glass yes, of water? Yes, I will. I got one right here, Mo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. In nineteen forty two, you would never see or 43 or 44, or most of 45, you would never see a magazine cover like this. You I'll would never, on. never see it. What am, I, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? People smiling and laughing and talking about the champagne, right? If you, had, if you had printed a cover like that in 1942, the FBI would have investigated it. This country was not experiencing a lot of superficial joy. Okay, use the mic. And then we're dying. Yeah, I, let me finish this up. I'm coming to an important Use the microphone, please. Oh, yeah. Sugar was raging, food was raging, gasoline was raging. The, uh, the tourist industry suffered great losses. They made it up by going into different kinds of businesses. The people were investing their money in the war willingly, happily. It was a great thing to buy a war bond. You paid 1875. And in 10 years, you got uh, 25. You couldn't listen to the radio without Fibber McGee and Molly, which I well remember. At the beginning, in the middle, and the end, they would give you some kind of message about rationing or uh, blackouts or something about the war. If we took Warren Buffett seriously today, we would do the same thing. I want to organize a protest in fact, a boycott by the su listeners, supporters of public broadcasting, that's Channel 11, and National Public Radio, that's uh, WBEZ. Oh. And the boycott would be to the following. Until you make a policy to make every weather report in your station also a report on global warming, we are not only going to stop contributing to you, we are going to boycott every one of the people who are contributing to you. Now, I'm not a great organizer, and I don't have a lot of energy, and I'm increasingly crippled, and blah, blah, blah. So maybe I can find someone to do it for me. Um, but that's the sort of thing that was, that was done as a matter of course in World War II, and that's why we're all going to perdition. And that, and you all gave a perfect example of it with your non-responsiveness. Why don't you go to a meeting somewhere where you can talk to people? I recommend Quaker meeting where everyone gets a chance to talk. And you don't have to, uh, well, it's up to you whether you want to listen. But uh, non-responsiveness, you know who says that non-responsiveness is, is the beginning of totalitarianism? Hannah Arendt, in her book on totalitarianism, says, what the totalitarian uh, leader wants is for people not to relate to each other, okay. but only to him. And George Orwell did that okay. in 1984, where there was the, was it a three-minute hate? There was this Trotsky-like figure who was the, uh, uh, the great critic of Big Brother. And they would have a meeting, and they would flash pictures of him speaking. Um, and then the people would start expressing their hate. They would yell and scream and blah, blah, blah. They were relating more deeply to the national issue than they were to each other. You people have not done a very good job of relating to each other, and I'm, one, I'm part of the each other. I was up here, a sick old man asking for 
an answer to a question or a reason for not asking it, and I had to strain my balls to get a few answers. That's why you're going to position. Okay. All right, Mo, you want to no, take no, any no. questions? All right. Uh, we'll have a very brief... Oh, hang up for that. A nice round of applause. Thank okay. You. We'll have a very brief question period. We'll keep it to about five minutes because we got a lot of people chomping at the butt for rebuttals. I'm sure. And uh, do you want to take any questions or you want to go straight into rebuttals? Uh, whatever you want. I'll, I'm willing to take questions. Does anybody, would anybody mind objecting going straight into rebuttals? No. All right, then we'll uh, get up there and uh, let's thank Mo Shanfield again. We're going to bypass it, Charlie, because it's now 7.52, and we want to get a lot of, lot of rebuttals in. We'll go four minutes each, and our first rebutter is Frank. So when you're ready, Frank, go ahead. Okay. Thank you for allowing me to uh, <clears throat> tell some of my thoughts. The thing that at my age is strike me more... Uh, deeply is the magnificent universe that we live in. This universe is so big, we have no idea, we cannot see the end of it with our biggest telescopes, but we see galaxies and more galaxies and billions of stars in each galaxy, the same like in our own. So the thing that I come, come to understand very clearly that we are not the only sentient creatures in this universe. We are one of many somewhere. They are so far away, the distances are so great that probably we will never communicate with them. But if we do, if we do, to me it will be the greatest thing that it would ever happen in my life, to communicate with others. If we other, do, then what did you say? Communicate with other sentient... Yeah, uh, then what? Right. It would be great to communicate with them to see how they think, how they see the universe. But if you if you know what life is, and this is uh, you have to think, life is a product of energy that is coming from the stars, and this energy is absorbed by matter, and then that energy initiates the chemical and and life forms life uh, uh, giving forms that initiate all this process of living things in the earth so as we as we can see this is a very it's, it's complicated but it's a very common event all around the universe so life must be a common consequence of this universe now i'm no no i'm it, you still got three minutes i'm just getting heather's attention yeah. Okay, well, the, the thing that I want to say is that I am totally, totally dumbfounded by the, by the magnificent universe we live in and how little of our, our compatriots uh, are aware of the universe we live in. We are uh, dumbfounded on, on our petty, uh, petty fights, petty discussions, and petty uh, attacking one each other, and we don't get nowhere. So I wish that uh, we have a better uh, emphasis on understand the universe we live in and a little less on demanding can that I, everybody think the same way. Tim, uh, can I ask Tim a question? Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. That was a wonderful speech you made. And what I want to ask you is, if you were sitting in your living room and someone came in and said, your granddaughter, three-year-old granddaughter, is wandering out onto the street and it might be killed by the traffic, would you have made that speech to that person before doing anything about it? I don't understand the question. The question is very simple. You're sitting in your living room. You remember yes, your living I'm room? Sitting. Okay, you I'm have sitting. a nice, comfortable chair there? Yes. Imagine yourself sitting there. You're reading a, a nice novel. Okay, I'm and someone walks, in, someone walks in and tells you your granddaughter is wandering out onto the street. She's in danger of being run over. Now, would you have made that wonderful speech to that guy before taking action? I will say, what the fuck are you going here telling me instead of saving her? 
you something fucking so asshole. So you're busy attacking him. Uh, no, I'm not busy attacking the fucking asshole. He's telling me something that he has uh, 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 And, and he's coming and saying, oh, your daughter is going to be killed. Fuck you. Well, I mean, they, what, what kind of question is that? You want an answer to your question? You want an answer? No, I, I told you, you my answer. You just ask me a question. You don't want an answer. All right, next no, don't answer. ask me questions. You don't want to hear all right, next, next, next rebutter, please. Give me bullshit and they won't listen. Oh, stop yelling! You are yelling. Yeah. I know. All right, next yeah. rebutter. Yeah. Hold up there, we got an open mic. Four minutes. I thought that was a great presentation. My wife reacted the same way. Shut up, guys. Oh, thank you. When you're ready, go ahead. We'll talk after we'll talk. Just talk. Ignore us. Um, hi. <laughs> Um, my name is Demetria. I just want to say to the speaker, I really like the the beginning when you incorporate incorporated um, Christ into your speech because I am a Christian, so I really did appreciate that. Um, as far as um, the topic goes, um, I like the predict the predictions of coming into 2018. I think like for a person that's I'm young, of course, but that's something that. We, um, me as a person, need to know moving forward, like how I can be more progressive this year. What I can, what I can do personally to change, to change um, what's going on around me and my community. Um, yeah, um, I'm just, I'm overall, overall happy about most of the, happy about most of the predictions, Donald Trump and the whole com conviction and the fraud and everything coming to the light. Thank you, Charlie. Um, Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go next. Let's get the rebuttal to your right. I said mine was the best one I've ever heard. What the heck were you trying to pull with your speech tonight, with these audience reactions and everything else? You know we have a protocol here, and you were off base by the topic. Well, you know, I understand. Put that up for a vote. I'm not going to put it up. Would you all like to vote on whether I no. went no. there? No. 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 So the, 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 the majority is denying the minority is right. Let's have several here. We don't see how going in the next room. I want to do something civil to have a vote. Well, yeah. What is more civil than that? It's my turn to speak right now. Yeah, and it's up to you to decide whether you want to vote. And I don't want to vote. All right, now we know what kind of guy you are. We know exactly what kind of guy I am. Now, you're talking about the 1948 having a whole country get into some kind of industrial rebuilding phase, so to speak, correct? To, to combat global warming. I didn't mention 1948. Well, I mean 1945 or whatever it was. You were saying. You want to know the fact? Okay. I was referring to the rearmament plan that Roosevelt initiated in 1942. Okay. A couple of months after Pearl Harbor. Right. Now, in that rearmament plan, there was seven billion dollars promoted, seven trillion, the equivalent of seven trillion dollars in today's money, to develop an atomic bomb. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. There is your solution to global warming. <laughs> Not a bomb, nuclear power. Oh man, you are fucked up, man. <laughs> in the form of, in the form of molten salt thorium-based reactors. Uh, we, we've spoken about this before. Can you prove once more that you are lost in space? Well, Frank, I, I, I was just at the most recent Thorium Energy Alliance conference. Bring these to people who doesn't understand it. Oh, I think they think they do. Unfair. Of you to bring this issue clear at this time. Well, what I'm simply saying is that you're not going to argue with the equation E equals MC squared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we don't pursue the type of power that that can create, I honestly think we're shorting ourselves <laughs> because with the, with the chemical reactions we have today that power an industrial society, you know, we're still going to be reliant on fossil fuels. Um, the thing is, I still think that the nuclear power option, what we have today is not a good one. It's basically submarine reactors scaled up from what Rickover had. But 
when I look at the director of Oak Ridge National Laboratories, Alvin Weinberg, for many years, who was instrumental in developing the, the light water reactor like we have now, also later on in his life realized the shortcomings of it and was one of the first to bring up global warming, one of the first to bring up the problems that will have it, and he was the one who also came up with a somewhat of a solution for it. We ran one of these reactors in the early 60s for almost 4,000 hours. And the bottom line is, is that if we can pursue this technology a little further, and there are already four firms right now in the U.S. alone pursuing it with investors under Wall Street. you got Flybe Energy, you got a number in Canada. I think we'd be stupid if we didn't finish Five the job. Minutes. Okay. Anyway, I've uh, time for me to uh, vacate the thing. And I've had my say. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, give you a couple of numbers. <clears throat> if you can remember them, it'll make everything easier to understand. <laughs> one of them is 10,000 to 1. 10,000 to 1. That's a number that's worked with all over the world now in other countries. They're working with a number. 10,000 times more light falls on the planet every day than what the human race needs to use for energy. We collect one ten thousandth with solar panels and the new battery technology and storage and a few other things that are currently available. Collect one ten thousandth of the sunlight with cheap solar panels and we don't need coal, oil, gas, nukes, or the majority of the wind machines that are out there. Solar has dropped in price like the cheap cell phones, cheap laptops, you have to look at the cost. As uh, Amory Lovins pointed out uh, back in 1976, 78, nuclear power is an excellent, expensive way to boil water. Mm -hmm. uh, solar concentrators can boil water much cheaper than nuclear power can anywhere in the world if that's what you want to do is boil water. But uh, there's another engineering principle that we see it. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm in the heating and air conditioning business. When you used to turn up your thermostat, uh, the thermostat would do like a little switch. It would make contact, mm -hmm. and it would, uh, like turning on a light switch, it would turn on the gas valve, just two wires going to it. The burners would come on in the furnace, and then you'd get heat. Well, the new furnaces, when you turn up the thermostat, it energizes uh, a little timer in a solid, it's a computer board in the furnace. A little timer starts, and then a little motor starts, a draft motor. Uh, there's 12 things that have to happen perfectly in sequence in order for your furnace to come on. Well, that's the same principle with uh, ordinary uh, solar panels, which are simple and very few or no moving parts, versus a complex machine like a, a nuclear power plant. It doesn't matter if you can make them safe and relatively inexpensive. The more, as you go up in complexity, you have more failures of parts and problems. It's just simple, basic uh, engineering physics. That's why, with the time frame we have to work with, as Mo pointed out, we need a World War II type global mobilization to build solar, wind, energy efficiency, if we're going to do something about the global warming problem, climate change that's here now, the latest, uh, for those of you that didn't see it on Common Dreams, the Union of Concerned Scientists put out a report, 15,000 climate scientists published a 25-year update from 1992. They said their updated, their updated analysis of climate change and global warming analysis, their computer projections all those years were wrong. Each year they were predicting how fast climate change was happening, they were wrong. It was happening faster than what they were predicting. As the numbers get better and better, we get a better and better handle on it. We, the picture is becoming, you know, sharpening into crystal clarity like uh, the old television show program used to say on uh, the outer limits. You know, we can sharpen the focus and it, it comes into crystal clarity. Well, the picture on global warming now and climate change is crystal clear. That's why the billionaire fossil fuel owners are paying their intellectual prostitutes in the Congress to lie to us, to slow down any legislation that might 
cut into fossil fuel profits because if the human race is going to have any kind of viable survival 35 years from now, kids that are little now, by the time they get to be, you know, middle age, Miami is going to be underwater. <laughs> That's what's happening, and it's, it, it, it's, the evidence is everywhere. And, and the flooding, we don't even have to wait for sea level rise. Miami, some of it is underwater uh, periodically every year now with the highway, coastal highways and the, and the flooding from the hurricanes and everything else. We have to collectively support the mobilization of going toward a green economy, and that means uh, there's a, a movie, I don't know if any of you saw it, I just uh, saw it on YouTube last night, a speech by Jeff Daniels in a series called Newsroom. And he was a, he was a new, he played a newscaster, but he, they, they had a conference and he was asked, uh, you know, can you tell us why America is the greatest country in the world? And everybody said, well, there's freedom and uh, we have innovation. And he, he thought, he says, America is not the greatest country in the world. We're 150th in uh, child mortality. We're the, we're the greatest country in the world in three things. We have, we spend the most on defense. We have the most number of people that believe angels are real. And uh, what's the third thing? Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we have the most people incarcerated per thousand. Yeah. We have a for-profit prison system and it's profitable to shove people in there. Yeah. Taxpayers, you know, the, the billionaires yeah. make yeah. profits yeah. off of this. Yeah. So start logging on to Common Dreams every day and you'll see articles that talk about this stuff. You want to know what's happening in 2018. Uh, Common Dreams is the number one site. Heads and shoulders above Common everything Dream. else. CommonDreams.org. Is that the name of a no, it's a news aggregation site. All right, next, so, please. Uh, quick, just one thank, thank you. Uh, Mo had one quick question. Uh, do you, what do you know about billionaires and corporations building some kind of uh, <coughs> Dr. Strange love shelters so they can survive the global warming catastrophe? He asked about if, if billionaires are building uh, underground shelters like from Dr. Strange love to su survive the catastrophe. Well, I've, I've read and heard rumors that, yeah, in, in some places in Europe, they do have underground shelters, uh, you know, like almost a small town or city size built in the dug out of mountains. They've been planning for years to survive. So uh, that's one of the subjects that's never covered in the press. You have to research it yourself. Anybody wants a card with these websites on it, uh, let me know. Okay, okay thank Let's get you. to our next rebutter. Thanks, Andy. Okay, five minutes. You want to come into my doomsday bunker? Uh, sorry, there's only room for me in my can. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Mo, um, this was a good talk, uh, but uh, I do regret that you didn't uh, touch more on what was um, listed in the uh, program. Uh, you were going to have predictions that were based on the Hebrew prophets. Uh, I thought it was going to be very interesting. Maybe you can follow up on that later. Um, the, um, but I, I am impressed by the fact that uh, Warren Buffett uh, called you out for uh, being ahead of your time on the uh, uh, global warming and the uh, necessity of an infrastructure uh, to get off of fossil fuels. Um, around um, around uh, 1990, it was 1989, I wrote the first version of a stage play uh, called The Modern Socrates. Uh, well, Lichtenberg snuck out, but he could tell you he was one of the few people that came to it when it was produced in 1991, but uh, it involved an artificially intelligent uh, program that uh, uh, which was called Socrates. And Socrates uh, uh, was uh, uh, a proponent of doing something about global warming. Yeah, it was an environmental catastrophe coming in the future. And then here we're, we're at it. We're close to the tipping point. But um, with a chance, if we could reverse the curse and get rid of Trump, maybe we could make some progress with that in reality. If we could do what with that? Reverse the curse and get rid of Trump. Oh, reverse the curse. Yeah. Because <laughs> it seems like Trump is our curse now. Um, the, um, um, the predictions that... Um, uh, Charlie was uh, talking about in the uh, preamble um, to, to your talk, Mo, um, uh, when he um, was discussing how the Democrats are finally going to maybe try to impeach Trump um, after they win the uh, November uh, elections um, and take over um, the House of Representatives, which we all hope, at least, uh, um, that should be um, 
interesting to see if that happens because they've proven themselves to be such wimps uh, in many ways, and uh, um, it's uh, probably going to be more of a free fall. They won't. They obviously won't be able to get an impeachment uh, bill. Uh, passed at least until January of 2019, so that goes beyond the range of the 2018 predictions. Uh, but um, in the meantime, of course, um, we'll want to um, uh, continue to try to resist Trump and all of the bad things that he's uh, trying to do to people. And um, I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, we just uh, uh, want to... Um, Two and a half minutes. Oh, really? I've got that much time? Oh. It's five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, maybe um, um, we could um, discuss um, uh, the Russian collusion or uh, uh, the Mueller thing. Um, a lot of people were expecting Mueller was going to be fired, and that would be a so-called constitutional crisis. They was going to do it around Christmas time. And uh, so uh, a lot of you know I mentioned I'm with a group called Refuse Fascism. I forgot to bring the, uh, the uh, pin that I sometimes wear. Um, it says uh, no to a fascist regime. Um, at the time that it was formed, uh, which was about a year ago, it was in December of uh, 2016 after the election, um, it was not quite clear to as many people uh, that Trump and the Republicans um, were a fascist leaning uh, totalitarian variety. And um, so we found that out. Uh, many more people are realizing that and they're using the fascist word. Uh, at least on K at least on MSNBC, the cable <laughs> program that I listen to, uh, cable station I listen to a lot. Uh, but um, uh, we all have to, you know, bind together and uh, resist um, because uh, we don't want to, um, it to be um, normalized um, that uh, these kind of uh, assaults on our civil liberties occur, our assaults, our, uh, assaults on women's rights, assault on uh, minorities. Um, trying to demonize immigrants and turn people against each other in this country when we should be united to fight the, the uh, common threat of um, possible environmental catastrophe and, and um, to um, reach um, uh, a peaceful resolution of uh, settlements. Uh, talking about getting rid of the Iran uh, um, uh, uh, deal that Obama created, that, that wasn't uh, one of the predictions in here that uh, he might use that to uh, try to foment um, a war with Iran. The North Korea thing is, of course, the, the most uh, uh, cutting issue of the day because he's uh, threatened uh, North Korea enough times. Now, I probably used up most of my time, so uh, in the interest of uh, resisting uh, Trump and the possible impeachment of him, um, <clears throat> I'm going to repeat, um, I uh, had composed some uh, lyrics, alternative Christmas carols a couple weeks ago. I tried to sing one and it was terrible because I tried to do it in a higher register, I think, than I should have. So I'm going to try to do this again. Okay, and um, everybody bear with me if I uh, blow it, but I, I tried to rehearse it. <coughs> and uh, remember, some people don't take their Christmas tree lights till, down until January 30th, so. Oh, come all ye faithful. All who love their country, O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Washington. Come and impeach him, born the worst of humans. O oh, come, let us impeach him. O oh, come, let us impeach him. O oh, come, let us impeach him. Trump, the would-be king. <laughs> All right. If anyone wants copies of these, uh, just uh, stop and see them. Okay, I'm going to give a, a short history lesson. The microphone is not working. The microphone is not working. I think working. somebody switched it off. He turned it off, Ken. It's okay, Ken. All right, go ahead. Oh. It was turned down. Just turned it down. Turn it down. All right. Is that? Is that yeah, oh, yeah. I can hear myself. A short yeah. history yeah. lesson. Yeah, a, uh, a uh, I met my husband 30 plus years ago, and as part of our prenuptial agreement, we were living in sin together before that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to promise to at least come to some of these sessions. 
did. <laughs> and uh, have been coming since then. Um, uh, so I think uh, one of my, I have several analysis of the College of Complexes. One is that I have heard everything from the totally ridiculous, <laughs> some of which we have heard here tonight, <laughs> to the totally sublime. I really heard some very, very deep thought in here. And you just have to do like you do in the thrift store. You just, you can't go looking for something specific. You have to just sort through things and go through all of it and you see something interesting and there you have uh, sterling silver or something or another. So, um, okay, so I'm going to be popping back and forth. First, we're not the 150th in the infant mortality rate, but we always have had the highest maternal mortality rate of any industrialized country since statistics have been kept from the late 19th century. And, in, and as also, as a correlation to that, we've had the highest infant mortality rate. And um, I'm sure these ladies are aware of this here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm putting it's you out. It's fine. Is that the maternal mortality rate among black women is four times. What the, matern what the maternal mortality rate is for white women. So that was that's always been a problem. We've always discriminated against people on, in a number of areas, including health care and provision of health care. And this is and and this is the most critical. This is a very critical thing. And education. I mean, I was in an intense discussion with the other gentleman at our table of that. You know, from the from the beginning in this country, in, in this city, we've actively discriminated against people of color. And from the after the Second World War, one of the ways that that the, the middle class and working class were able to get wealth was the um, VA benefits, including the ability to get mortgages and buy houses. And basically, it leveraged your wealth. You were able to put a thousand dollars down and by golly you own twelve thousand dollars worth of house which is what my parents did actually i think they put even less than that down i don't think they had a thousand bucks and um so they really leveraged their wealth and it really made their lives much more secure but that people discriminated against uh, the, the the government would did not give that money to black veterans and they built housing developments that they sold to white veterans and in the covenants to that it forbade it ever being sold to an African American family and even if you bought the house you couldn't resell it to an African American family so we systematically re refused to let people make people able to uh, function in the society and to accumulate wealth the way it's supposed to happen. Okay, so that was part of it. Um, I felt I didn't. I don't like church. I get a rash whenever I go to church, and um, and so I don't do it very much. I mean, you have to die or something before I might go to your funeral. And. Um, and, and, and maybe I might go to your wedding. I didn't go to my brother and sister-in-law's wedding. But I don't like churches because they really made uh, a... Uh, there were churches in this city in 1859 who preached that slavery was just fine, that because it said in the Bible slaves owned, owed uh, allegiance and respect to their masters and had to do what they said. And, in, in, and then, of course, people will say that the North fought the South to uh, abolish slavery, but they really didn't. They, they fought the South because they were seceding from the Union and they didn't want anybody to secede. And they used, actually, the Emancipation Proclamation only freed the slaves who were in the Southern states. The slaves who were in the Northern states were not free. After the Civil War, we had a 10-year period of reconstruction. Oh, what, what is my time? You're, you're over now. I'm that's, sorry. That's okay. At any rate, it, it, but, so we maintained the, the, the slavery, at least in economic terms, with Jim Crow and, and, and all of that. 
So I guess this doesn't have much to do with your talk, except I really resent it when you demanded that I answer your question. You don't have the right to do that. I have a right to demand. You have a right to refuse. All right. All enough. You, enough. You want, you want to leave, leave the room. Yes. Four minutes. You got five minutes. Four, four. Four minutes. Four minutes left. My name is Gina Bozo. I answer the name of Bozo. And once one called me a bionic Bozo. <coughs> <clears throat> and uh, oh, 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 Holy Spirit, soul of our soul, closer to us than we are to ourselves. Illumine our eyes and inspire our hearts that we may know the truth and do the good. We should count that day a loss in which we, in which we did not learn some truth or do some good. And uh, <clears throat> here, I got a few notes here. You mentioned about the God's angels and the Adam and Eve. Here's a statement here. Adam had them and how out of God to choose the Jews. Adam had them and how out of God to choose the Jews. I told you a couple weeks ago <clears throat> what life is. <clears throat> life is hard by the yard and the cinch by the inch. I, I heard about this about 50 years ago and I still remember it off and on. As far as God and angels. Oh, uh, Francisco, are you atheist? I know he had trouble in South America, <clears throat> Just, but uh, uh, Francisco, me, but save your F words for the gutter. Saying, Francisco, it. save your F words for the gutter. <clears throat> I told that to the cops once. Yeah. 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 As far as God and angels. Now, last week I mentioned about that, uh, Christopher Hitchens. For him, God is the Big Bang. <clears throat> the Big Bang farted out this universe. <clears throat> the Big Bang for Hitchens is <laughs> did, did God create this world or did the uh, Big Bang fart out this universe? As far as the angels and saints. Uh, okay, <clears throat> an angel, I told you a couple weeks ago that God had, does not have hands and angels do not have wings. And uh, there's an a angel of pure spirits. The angels, the, uh, the theme song is I Ain't Got Nobody. A rock does not have any spirit. See, angels they don't have any body. A rock which has a body, but doesn't have any spirit. So that, that proves the existence of the angels. If a rock does not have a spirit, angels don't have, have bodies. <clears throat> and American dream. What is American dream? <clears throat> Years ago, I heard that um, it's um, a car in every garage and a chicken in every pot. That's uh, American dream. And, uh, yeah, how you doing? Okay, yeah. Oh, it's, it's oh so easy to dump on Trump. We wanted a president that was not a, uh, okay, a lawyer. There. I not mentioned a couple weeks ago that all the presidents were uh, um, lawyers. Many of them, most of them were lawyers. Finally, we got somebody that is not a lawyer. We need to start dumping on Trump. And does anybody know here what's going on in this here group here? Does anybody know what's going on here? Yes. You should take, you should take notes. And our illustrious Sir Charles the Great, alias uh, Charlemagne, he, he called us boys and girls. Doesn't they speak volumes? For Charles, we are his boys and girls. Charles uh, does not want any, any uh, suggestion box because Charles has all the, in, uh, uh, the answers. Uh, For Charles, the, his uh, cup of tea is conspiracies, <laughs> unions, and uh, politics. That's his cup of tea. You have beautiful <laughs> things about what today is uh, uh, <coughs> New Year's resolution. Uh, Everybody could share. What are your new resolutions? My resolution be uh, be on time because I'm late. My parents were late for. And your their, time is up, Mo. Five minutes. No, your time's up. Time's up. Okay, uh, which is it, God or Hitchens' uh, Big Bang, which farted out the universe? How about the clock? <laughs> All right. Who's next? Next rebuttal. Why don't you go, Andy, and then we'll have our speakers wrap it up. All right, I'll wrap it up for you. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up for tonight then. Uh, uh, and, uh, Yes, Mo is going to come up now. Give give our speaker a hand for tonight. Okay, Charlie, you have anything to say? Words. Okay, come on up and give us a summary. All right. Ooh, here, let's do that.
By the way, real quick, uh, Karina just called me and she's invited any of us out to the Golden Nugget afterwards for more further discussion. So I'm going to head there and whoever is Iris, Karina. Karina. Why didn't she come to the college? Uh, I'm not sure, Charlie, but she did invite us well, out. Well, the college doesn't exist if nobody comes. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, I'm now. passing on a general invite. Too busy to come to the gallery. Might have had car trouble or something. Who knows? Who knows? But she's invited us to go. Where's this place at? The Golden Nugget on Island Park Road. Just up over that way a little bit. Catchy and early. It's not here. Okay, people. Let's uh, let our speaker have the final word here. All and right. We'll wrap it up for the night. Right. We don't have a college and nobody goes. But that doesn't mean that she didn't She's have not here. That's not ready good enough for me. Well, you're not ready. Yes, you, are not, you are not the God that knows everything. No, she's not here. Well, she's not here because you she couldn't be here. What, 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 why you have to judge We don't exist that? without people coming. Charlie, we, had, Charlie, so we so can stand have to understand do with that. Anything, you know? You know? <laughs> Don't we, don't, we don't exist by going to the Golden Nugget. You don't make any sense. No. No. <laughs> but he wants you to join I mean, you out like here. <coughs> okay, you know, try again. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Well, first of all, I, I'd like to apologize for having led us into energy. Okay. And I have a, a positive message that I failed to give. And I apologize for having failed to give you a very positive message. There is hope. Hope has been manifested in two, in two ways recently that I have seen. And they're both done by women. Women will be our salvation. Uh, one obvious way. One obvious way. A little louder, Mo. One obvious way. Is that too loud? One obvious way in which a woman has struck a blow against, just the beginning of a blow against Trumpism is Maria Hoppus, the county treasurer of all people. She really uh, saw the emergency of this Republican tax plan, which was going to deny many Illinoisans, mostly uh, middle class Illinoisans, people who own houses, and it denied them what had been inherent in the federal income tax since it was passed in, what, 1913 or 14. I think Teddy Roosevelt was an advocate of it. <clears throat> Under Teddy Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, uh, Warren Gamaliel Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Franklin Dunn, Need I go on? Under every president until this time, the federal government, out of respect to the state governments and their income, refused to tax, in effect, cause a double taxation on states. Inherent in the federal income tax law was the provision that whatever taxes you paid, sales tax, or property tax and some other tax I don't even know about, you could deduct those taxes from your federal taxes. The Republicans have always been shouting about states' rights. Well, this is perhaps the most important states' right that has been violated in, in, in my living memory. And the Republican tax bill just swept that away. Now, I think the, se the Senate with some Republicans from um, blue states modified it so you could get a, a, a deduction on your federal taxes from, of, of the first $10,000 that you pay uh, in property taxes and sales taxes. Maria Pappas was Johnny on the spot. As soon as she saw that coming, she announced to the, the uh, taxpayers, the property taxpayers of Cook County, that she was going to go out of her way to accept their early payment, their 2018 uh, taxes. 
And by paying before, I'm not sure when the date of the Republican law goes into effect, but by paying before that date, they could get their full tax deduction. Now, there's many of those um, property owners who own, you know, half a million dollar houses and even million dollar houses. <clears throat> they got that money by being pretty smart. They already were starting this, but she went uh, gangbusters on it. Now, that's one way of denying Trump some income that he says he wants to use for another 64 uh, trillion or billion dollars, pardon me, I think it is, for uh, uh, our military, uh, which is, yeah, which is good for fighting the last war. Watch this. Kind of equipment's good, yeah. Uh, providing the military. But even more important than that, this sets a pattern for Illinois denying revenue to this uh, now alleged federal government headed by Mr. Trump. I'll tell you one example of how we could do it. And I, I want to call a conference of um, uh, certified public accountants and economists and lawyers, and they can figure out a lot of ways for us to use the same kind of tactics, tactics that corporations have used for denying um, the federal government revenue. I'll give you one example which may not hold, because I don't know all the ins and outs of tax law. But, but here's my first thought. The employers of the state of Illinois, or whichever of them wants to fight Trump, could say to their employees, I'm not going to pay you salaries anymore. I'm not going to pay your wages anymore. That's over with. So um, they will not have income that can be taxed by the federal government. He will say to them, what I'm going to give you is charity, and you don't have to pay it back. But maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe you, you would have to. I don't know. See, I don't even know. It's, can charity be taxed? The, yes. The federal government? Yeah? It I'm can. Yes. All right, I may be wrong on that, but you see where I'm going. I'm sure there are some devices like that that can be established <clears throat> that would deny the federal government tax revenue, especially under Trump. Because right now, what Trump is doing is sucking with this uh, Republican tax bill. He is sucking wealth out of the blue states and giving it to the red states because that's where most of the war industries are. All right, that's one piece of good news. What the middle class property owners of Cook County uh, with Maria Pappas, Maria Pappas said, my followers are out on the street, I have to go out and leave. No, but she did a good job. Of it. She was on every um, political talk show in, in Chicago explaining what needs to be done. In fact, uh, Ben Jarofsky uh, carried, <laughs> he had a little session <clears throat> where he was guiding a, a guy through, going through the computer and pressing the right button to find out what his taxes are and how to pay them. And it can all be done by computer. So that's one piece of good news. The revolt of the middle class property owners. <laughs> the, other, the other good news is even more profound and historic. It's a revolt against the patriarchy, the patriarchy which is basic to modern capitalism. It's a um, uh, revolt against the patriarchy. It's, it's a revival of the goddess society was once guided by a goddess or more than one goddess. Now, the Hindu religion tends to give the goddesses pretty much equal uh, prestige with the gods. Okay. Uh, Greek and uh, Hebrew society were taken over by the uh, nomad horsemen from the north and from Asia who had a male uh, god. And there's an author named Raphael Patai, P-A-T-A-I, who speaks of how the ancient Hebrews used to wor worship goddesses. And you're examples of goddesses. Because men don't have the power to give life. OK. 
How is this revolt taking place? Miss America. Miss America up to this point have been the phony goddess of capitalism. Okay. She's not, she wasn't really a goddess, but she didn't have any power of her own. And she had to do ridiculous things like parade and bathing suits and not be considered in her spiritual dimension. A number of, I think it was about 40 Miss Americas and uh, former contestants have accused officers of Miss America organization of sexual abuse. This is the beginning of the revolt of the goddess, which means the end of the patriarchy which supports capitalism. And that's the good news that I see. Thank you. Oh, incidentally, I'm going to run for governor on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like it's another night at the college. Well wrapped up. I'd like to thank everybody to come who came in attendance. And I just want to close with the following remarks. We've been through this before. Remember Richard Nixon and Watergate and his infamous deals. Uh, just uh, remember, you don't want the president to be known as a crook. So, you know. I want to say this to the television. I made my mistakes. But in all of my years, so what did you learn? I have never